Hey guys, how's it going? Simon here. Uh, and today, I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek around what I've been produce, producing for the webinars in the Academy, uh, letting you guys know a little bit about the content. I've just finished up a defending series uh, where I've talked about defending in different spots. I talked about defending in like single race pots from the big blind uh, and also three bear pots in position. Uh, so I've done a really detailed breakdown, um, you know, about, I think about four and a half hours worth of uh, like lectures and webinar content. Uh, it's really, really good stuff, but I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a teaser um, for what, what, what's in store for the Academy if you do want to go check it out. I um, hope this is really helpful. We're going to be talking about like defending in three of pots today. I know it's something that a lot of you guys struggle with. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Before we jump into it, I'm going to let you guys know we're still giving away Jimmy Dorade's tips for how to crush preflop. Go check it out in the comments below. Really going to help your preflop game. Onto the material for today, and we're not gonna be going through the whole thing, guys, because, you know, uh, if you wanna go see, like, you know, the full breakdown with, like, you know, Pio examples, every single slide, you're gonna have to join the Academy. But I wanna give you guys a bit of a teaser for the kind of the stuff that I've been working on and stuff I've been producing for the Academy. Um, and I thought this was a really, really good series, and this is something that I, a lot of guys say, they found really, really helpful for their games. Um, and we're talking about defending thresholds. Uh, and in this example here, we're talking about when you're in the button, when you're in, like, you know, in position uh, in a three bet pot, you, how do you defend on the flop? How do you defend versus small bet sizes? How do you defend against like large bet sizes? What happens on the turn versus different barrels? Like, what are we meant to do? And so I created a little bit of like a baseline proof uh, blueprint for how to like approach these spots. Um, this will hold true in like other positions too. We don't just throw it out the window once it goes like cut off versus small blind or MP versus small blind. You know, these are kind of just general heuristics that you can keep in mind and help you guys uh, navigate these spots appropriately uh, and get to the river with as much of your range as possible without overcalling. So I think like easiest one to do is we're gonna start off with facing small range bets, okay? And we're only gonna go through a couple of slides here today. Um, but this is the first one and I kind of broke it down into like, you know, the common like spots where we're going to face these bets. So, um, and typically on, you know, we're going to face small range bets quite often on ASI and like single Broadway boards. This is like the main boards that like, you know, the small one or the big one gets to range bet. The like the middle more connected boards are typically they use like a larger sizing for a mix. Um, and for the smaller like, you know, connected boards, like let's say like 654, um, they either like, you know, just checking range or they're like a low frequency uh, C bet. But on these like, you know, ace Broadway high boards um, or even like paired boards as well, um, we're often going to face small range bets and we're going to like, have a bit of a discussion about like, what's the defending threshold. And I know a lot of people like really mess up this spot um, because a lot of people really overfold. And the big thing that you'd be careful of is you've got to be, you, particularly versus like small range bets, you've got to call super, super wide. So you'll see here, um, I basically said only fold unpaired hands, uh, you know, without a half decent backdoor. So basically, if you've got a backdoor, you've got a pair, you've got some overcards, you know, you're gonna be sticking along for the ride. Everything else gets defended. And if you guys don't believe me, let's check out an example here. So um, let's uh, let's go to, let's uh, let's do an example here. So let me go find uh, Pio, go into my saves, uh, and it's, it's an absolute mess, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's go small blind versus button, uh, simplified strategy, range bet. Uh, small and let's just pick like a random like you know single Broadway board uh, that we might face a range bet on so something like you know King six deuce pretty 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 normal board that you might face a ra face a range bet on um, and how does this hold up so this is the range bet here and what we're gonna see if we go here um, we're gonna say you know all, all the good stuff like all this stuff is calling obviously you know absolutely no folding if you got a pair someone range bets into you you're gonna be calling and a lot of you guys know that but you know once we start getting to the other stuff, it's really important that we defend really wide. So once we get into the ace highs, you know, obviously uh, anything with a, you know, a draw is going to be sticking around. Anything with a gut shot, all good. But when we get to the no draws, you're going to see that basically all the combos that have like a backdoor, so the, you know, the hearts um, or like a spade, uh, it's going to be coming along like ace 10 with a spade, uh, ace, even just ace jack off without a spade. We're defending like really, really wide in these spots versus these small bets. Uh, once we even get lower than that, you're going to start to see, like, you know, even things like, you know, Queen Nine of Hearts, you know, two undercards, but like, you know, back to a flush or back to a straight door defending. Nine Seven of Hearts, you know, same kind of deal. It's only really stuff like, you know, 
10 8 of hearts, only has a backdoor like straight draw, no real backdoor flush draw. I mean, it's got the backdoor flush draw, but doesn't really have like a backdoor straight draw. Um, these are the ones that start to fall, but basically, if we have a backdoor, like even 10 8 of hearts is only losing like you know a fraction of a big blind, so it's, it's not even a massive mistake if we called something like this. So, um, really important we defend really wide in this spot. Um, basically, like you know, you've got the backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, you've got some overcards, you know, you got something that can go along, you're going to be sticking along for the ride versus small range bet. Um, that's the first one we're going to talk about. Um, I, uh, I'm now going to kind of skip ahead. I'm going to talk a little bit about the turn. Um, if you guys want to check out how to face medium range bets or large range bets, you're going to have to sign up to the academy. Um, but we're going to discuss like, you know, a bit of turn play now. Uh, and what happens after the small range bet? Okay. So typically after small range bets, uh, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to face like, you know, a couple of different sizes, but the most common size you're going to face is going to be a large mix. Often people will like start small on the flop, size up to three quarters on the turn to set up like, you know, a natural kind of progression to like jam the river. Okay. So um, what do we do when we face this 75% barrel? And I, and I think we, we can use the same pyro example when we have a, have a little bit of a dive into it. Um, but the general baseline for approaching this spot is we're going to want to fold all our pocket pairs except for the best one. Um, so the reason for that is going to be is when you call here and let's say we just get like, you know, relatively bricky turn, uh, we face, you know, that large barrel, you're going to see all these pocket pairs start to fold. And you might think, you know, pocket nines, pocket eights, these aren't bad hands. Why do they start to fold? And the problem is they just don't maintain equity very well across three streets. Uh, but the issue is, is when like, you know, this 10 comes on the turn, a lot of the bluffs are going to be hands like ace queen, ace jack, and these hands, like even without like a flush draw to go along with them, they're going to have like quite a bit of equity. You're actually going to only going to have like, you know, 70% equity against most of their bluffs here. Um, you also run into issues where like, you know, the board compare, um, and you just don't really maintain equity very well. So these hands start to fold, you know, our board pairs though, they're still doing super well. Like, you know, ace six, seven, six, eight, six, all of these really, really good. Even like ace two's bottom pair still doing really well. The benefit of like a hand like this is let's say like your opponent has a value bet like king queen. With a hand like pocket eights, you've only got two outs to improve against their value range. Whereas when you have a hand like ace deuce, you've got five outs. You've got like all your threes, all, all, all your twos, all three of your twos. Uh, if you hit any of those, you're going to stack some really, really strong hands on the river. Uh, and you also have the eight. So you have that over card as well. So um, even if you had like, you know, you're not going to have three deuce in this spot. But even if you did, that would be like, you know, you'd still have five outs against a hand like ace king. So... Having a board pair is really, really good. We don't fold any board pairs in a spot like this. Uh, we only fold our pocket pairs. So that's kind of, that, that'll hold up pretty consistently across the spot. Obviously not all of these spots are different, by the way, guys. I'm giving you a baseline kind of strategy for how to approach it. You can't have like, you know, a one size fits all. Co poker is way too complicated for that, but this is like, you know, how we, you know, might approach at the spot. Um, when it comes to our draws, we basically defend all our draws to the nuts. Um, so if we have a look here, uh, we're going to defend most of our draws anyway, um, but if we do start to fold something, it'll be start to be those like flush draws that like, you know, the lower flush draws um, or like our worst straight draws, particularly like our dominated straight draws that like draw to like really bad straights. So if we go here and we get our ace out highs and our nothings and we have a look at our combo draws, you know, all our combo draws, they've got a bunch of equity. They're going to stick around. Our flush draws, we've only got ace high and jack high flush draws in this spot. So, you know, they're, they're sticking around as well. Um, and then we get to like, you know, our eight out straight draws, queen jack, you know, still plenty of outs calling along. And then we get to our gut shots and we start to see that only really ace queen continues. Um, uh, ace jack, whilst it does kind of draw to the nuts, um, just doesn't have enough equity. Um, and you start to see like, you know, queen nine, gut shot not to the nuts, isn't going to defend. Now this ace jack example, you might go, Simon, you said I could defend all of my draws to the nuts. I've called ace jack on the turn. Is this a mistake? Um, and the, the truth is it's not actually a mistake. Um, if we have a look at ace jack in like uh, over here, you know, something like ace jack of hearts, you see that it's a, it, it's a break even call. And even like ace jack of diamonds, ace jack of clubs, they're losing like one big blind. This wouldn't be a massive mistake to make in game. If you guys call with ace jack, it wouldn't be the end of the world. The reason we're not calling ace jack here is our opponent could be bluffing with ace queen. So we're actually behind some bluffs. But it, it still wouldn't be an absolute disaster because you know, it's a pretty decent gut shot. You have like over cards. You can hit a jack and like still beat some hands. So it's not a disaster, but typically when we are calling on the turn, we do want to either beat his buffs or have like a bunch of equity. So that, that, those are typically how we approach, you know, our, our draws. Uh, 
important little caveat, gut shots are really like a lot worse on paired boards. Um, in the example I gave above, above, like, you know, imagine it was like King 10, three and the turn was a 10. All of a sudden the issue is, is like, you know, we can hit our draw to the draw, but we're not drawing to the nuts anymore. Uh, our opponent could hit a boat, our opponent could already have a boat, we could be drawing dead. And so our straight draws and like even our flush draws aren't as strong on paired boards. And so we have to be a little bit more cautious calling them on the turn. Um, and then basically in this spot, all other unpaired hands get uh, folded, except some don't have some ace-king, ace-queen. Remember, button versus big blind, three-bet pot. You're going to call some ace-king. You're going to call lots of ace-queen. Um, and quite often, you go, like, you know, why am I calling a, like an unpaired ace-king? Um, and I'm folding something like pocket eights. And we're going to actually bring up a quick little example here to discuss it. So I, don't, I want something where ace-king isn't a pair. Um, and isn't a draw. So let's pick a uh, let's pick let's pick a board. Um, I'm gonna go for this really small range bet, and I want to pick something like queen nine three. Okay. So in this example, we you know we face a small range bet for really small sizing. We call and we get this. Let's say uh, let's get a bricky kind of turn, two of clubs. Okay. We face this like three quarters barrel, uh, very common. And what we'll see here was we'll start to see the hands like ace king kind of call and hands like pocket eights fold. And you go, well, why am I calling ace king in a spot like this? Like, why would I rather call an unpaired hand when I have all these pairs that I'm folding? And the reason is, is that in terms of like beating bluffs or not, you actually have the same hand. Um, no one's value betting pocket sevens here. So like pocket eights aren't actually ahead of any bluffs. Ace queen is, ace king is ahead of just as many bluffs as pocket eights are. The benefit to calling something like ace king though, is if they're value betting a hand like kings or they're value betting a hand like even queen jack, queen 10. Ace king has, you know, six outs to improve, like five outs to improve, at worst, like, you know, three outs to improve. Whereas a hand like pocket eight, unfortunately, just only has the two outs. So whilst it might be like, well, pocket eights, pocket sevens are stronger than like, you know, ace king in this example, in these examples, quite often we rather call our unpaired overcards, okay? And this is something that a lot of people make mistakes. They just call linearly on the turn. They sit there and they go, okay, I'm going to call, keep calling all my pairs, or I'm just going to fold all my pairs, fold all my unpaired hands. And it's not as simple as that. Um, yeah, and quite often we actually want to call hands that are unpaired uh, with two overcards. Then we'd actually just rather call pocket pairs. And this is quite counterintuitive. It's something I often see people make mistakes with on the turn um and it's, it's something that i can think i can help you guys with um so this is kind of how i kind of constructed you know uh this little like you know webinar um you know we've also got stuff on like you know what you do facing like you know big bets on the flop mixes on the flop uh facing like you know and then how this like flows into like later straight so like what happens if you face a big bet on the flop and then big bet on the turn um and these are kind of like some like you know gto based defending protocols that i've like you know kind of developed to help you guys, you know, defending game. It's not about playing perfectly. It's not about doing it like, you know, 100%. It's way too complicated about this. It's about creating some simple rules and heuristics that you guys can follow um, that'll hopefully help you guys like make, make less mistakes in games. So I've currently done this one. I've done this for like, you know, three out pots in position. I've done it for like single raise pots, uh, you know, button versus big blind defending out of position, single raise pots, small blind versus big blind defending in position. Um, and I can, you know, look at a few more spots if you guys are keen in the future. Um, I hope this was really interesting, guys. Like, you know, a little bit of a sneak peek behind the paywall around, you know, what actually is in the academy. Um, and hopefully something that you guys want to check out. Uh, if you guys thought this was useful, you think there's another spot you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, cheers.